My name is Angeline Tan. I'm 35 years old. I've been an athlete all throughout my life and I love pizza. I've never been comfortable where I'm at. From marathons to Ironman triathlons, I'm constantly pushing my limits, driving myself further to the edge of endurance. I was born the youngest of four children into a family of modest means. My parents could not afford to buy us toys, but would bring us swimming in the sea every weekend when the tide was high. I developed my love for the outdoors then. When my husband and I moved to California from Singapore three years ago, I was awestruck by its beauty. I wanted to explore every nook and corner. And then a crazy idea struck. Why not travel across the country? Hi, my name is Jason. When Angie first came to me with this idea of like riding across America, I, at first I was like, yeah, sounds like an adventure, just do it. But then later on, as I think about it, I was like, huh, wait a minute, it's 4,000 miles. And that's a really, really long journey. But we made a deal, like you can go on this ride only if you can find like buddies to ride with you, which she did. I have a dream of riding across America in 40 days, 13 states, 4,000 miles, and in the journey to meet interesting people. I believe that everyone has got a great story to tell, and that is my mission, to bring out stories that are inspirational, that talks about the human tenacity of digging deeper beyond our limits, and also to discover great food in this great land of America. All right, so right now we're in Astoria and we're going to be riding through a couple of cities going down to Cannon Beach, to Seaside, to Tillamook and then the next couple of days we're going to roll into Idaho. So on this first day, how are you feeling? <laughs> well, I feel pretty pumped but at the same time, it's, um, it's a kind of peace and calm. Let's just do it, man. Let's just get on the road and ride and have fun. Starting from the west coast in Astoria, Oregon, I've chosen to take the legendary Trans-America Bike Trail, which is well known for its diverse terrain through many unseen parts of America. Crossing a total of 13 states and riding over 4,000 miles, I was to be leaving my husband and comforts behind for 40 days of hotel rooms, truck stop lunches, and a whole nation's worth of roads. Looking back, I had no idea what I was in for.
Peace out, day two. Where are we? In 30 miles, we're in Mackenzie River Bridge. Woo! Wow, I'm tired. <sighs> I'm so happy. Hello, oh, good morning. Day three. After what felt like my full night's sleep since leaving Astoria, I was excited to be back on the road. And it wasn't long when I ran into fellow traveler and dream chaser, Tim Smith, who had set out to walk from Los Angeles to New York City. All right, so my name is Tim Smith and um, I am 57 years old. I live up in Sacramento, California, and I'm walking from Los Angeles to New York, and I took off from Los Angeles on February 1st of 2014. I'm hoping to be in New York by October 1st. Really, the, the reason behind this trip is I wanted to challenge myself. This is something I've wanted to do since I was a kid. Um, I don't know why, I just always said, hey, I'm gonna walk across America someday. And, you know, when you're a kid, you think, oh, the year 2000, that's just so far away for me. And so I said, oh, I'm gonna do the year 2000. Of course, when 2000 came, I had, you know, the wife, the kids, the mortgage, the job, and all that kind of stuff, and couldn't do that. But now in 2014, I finally got the opportunity to do this. And, and uh, so I kind of took it on really as a challenge for the physical challenge and the mental challenge and kind of a third type of challenge that I haven't come up with a name for, which is kind of the, you know, the challenge of can I deal with anything that happens? You know, any random thing that happens, bad or good, you know, that where I have to make an adjustment. Can I deal with that? Yeah, so when I get to New York, you know, first thing I'm gonna do, obviously I'm gonna jump in the water at Coney Island, cause that's my target. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to some New York pizza. So got to get a slice of pizza when I'm there. I promised my wife that I would be home in time for Thanksgiving, so that's, that's my target. And Angie, keep on going, best of luck to you, and just keep plugging along. Day four, we're in Mitchell, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> this town here, you can't see it, but it's empty. A couple of shops, but no one's here. To be honest, <laughs> the past um, three days was um, painful. Every part that could hurt was hurting. But you know, to be riding and to be looking and experiencing all this beauty, I feel extre extremely privileged that I get to do this because I realize that not a lot of people get to do it. And I do. I'm really looking forward to crossing over to Idaho. I'm like, okay, I'm done with Oregon. I mean, not that I don't like Oregon, it's pretty and all, but I'm like, let's just get over the state. Let's move on to Idaho, state number two. Day six, I've ridden more miles than I ever did in a single stretch. My body, at this point, was breaking up in painful inflammation. My eyes are puffy and swollen. My ankles and knees hurt with every pedal. After a week, I was in excruciating pain for sitting eight hours on my saddle and riding a hundred miles each day. Okay, so I just got a text from Angie saying she's not feeling too good. Uh, the ride's been pretty tough, I think, from uh, the last stop uh, back in um, John Day up to Baker City. Uh, I guess the saddle is taking its toll, but she's taking a stop here at this restaurant, maybe get some food just a little bit after lunch, and hopefully she feels a little bit better after that. Thankfully, avid cyclist and bicycle shop owner, Jared Johnson, diagnosed the problem and prescribed a new saddle. The pain went away and I was good as new. While in Baker City, Jared informed me of a bike-loving entrepreneur in Missoula, Montana. It was a little out of the way, but I was eager to meet someone passionate about achieving their dreams. So I made a slight detour to meet Alex. 
Uh, my name is Alex Gallego. I own Missoula Bicycle Works here in Missoula, Montana, and I've had the bike shop uh, since uh, 2001. I've worked in bike shops since I was about 18 years old, and uh, I always thought that uh, owning a bike shop would be a fun uh, project for retirement. Uh, I used to teach high school, and when I moved to Missoula, uh, I had a hard time actually finding a, a teaching job, and uh, this bike shop was for sale, and I thought, well, maybe my retirement project might start a little bit earlier than, uh, than in my 60s. You know, honestly, when I was teaching high school, I thought that uh, teaching high school was one of the greatest jobs ever, but uh, Having a bike shop is, is easily the best job I've ever had. It, there's, there's never really a, a dull moment around, around the bike shop. There's always something to, to think about, something to improve upon. And as far as uh, going after your dreams, you know, I think dream big and uh, don't think that uh, they can't be achieved because a little bit of uh, work, perspiration, uh, you, can, you can do it. Good luck and uh, get after it. I've been climbing a thousand miles the past 10 days. My legs are worn. I'm out of breath. Cars zoomed past, oblivious to my struggle. With every last ounce of energy and willpower, I paddle on. The wind hit like a ton of iceberg. My hands were completely numb. I was soaked and shivering. Are you okay? It took everything. Yeah. <laughs> I had nothing left. After one of the most grueling encounters with freezing cold and hailstorm in Montana, Yellowstone is just a reward I need to get me back up on my feet and lift my spirits. an area of 3,500 square miles, Yellowstone is widely held as the first national park in the world and well known for its many wildlife and geysers. This, I gotta say, must be the highlight of this entire ride across America. Yellowstone, it's what I've been looking forward to and it's just absolutely spectacular. I'm feeling pretty drained, not so much physically, but mentally. And I thought, you know, here we are in Lander, Wyoming, kind of a biggish town. I thought, you know, just take a break, half a day's break today. You know, have some Thai food, go bowling maybe, even though I suck at bowling, and take it a little easy.
good at everything. I'm in Colorado right now, just rolled into Canyon City. It's been a challenging past week and in fact, I almost gave up. I had to take a day off to recharge myself mentally, emotionally and physically. So we're heading towards Kansas and, you know, I have a sneaky suspicion it's not going to be all a bed of roses and smooth sailing because in the Midwest, the weather can be outrageous, storms, tornadoes and freak weather. So hoping for the best, but prepared for the worst. many points in this bike ride where I wanted to give up. I think I've lost count a number of times that I did want to give up. Today is day 23 and it's come to a point now where the bike ride is just not gonna get any easier and the weather, the wind, the rain, the hail, the storm. I can't see a better day ahead. I can't see how it's gonna get any easier. I can't see how I'm getting any stronger mentally, physically or emotionally. In fact, it's come to a point where I'm glad to say I put up a fight. I did the best that I could. And if I go home today without completing this, at least I'm glad to say I tried. I tried. days on the road will take its toll on anyone. The road was harsh, and at times, it seems as if there was no light at the end of the tunnel. In my darkest hour, when I was ready to give up, I was reminded to allow myself to slow things down and smell the roses once in a while. Because there'll always be people who have it tougher than you do. Greg Griffin is a poignant reminder of this. My name's Greg Griffin. I'm, I, right now I live in Lebanon, Illinois. I'm originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Was in a car accident when I was 20 and broke my back. For the, for the first, I'd say five years, seven years, I hated everybody. I hated myself. I hated everybody that was in the, you know, uh, 
in my band, everybody that was around me, my family, everybody, because I thought, why would this happen to me? I, I, I've done nothing to anyone. So it took me a lot of years to get over that, but finally I got over it. And then now I just live life day to day and try to make the best of it I can. Well, I deal with it by thinking that, that if I can make something positive come out of someone else's life who's going through this, maybe a younger person, someone who thinks the end of the world is here, it's not. You've all, there's something good that can happen to, for you. It's not, it's not the end of the world. I know it sucks right now, but give it time. If you give it time, be patient and believe in the Lord, you, it, you will persevere and I promise you that. Keep pushing forward. I was just at my breaking point yesterday. I was this close to giving up, but I spoke to my husband, had a good night rest, had some good food in my belly, and I woke up this morning with a new resolution that I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna carry on to the East Coast. It doesn't matter where, I just have to make it in 40 days, and I'll create a new route and head east. I don't know where, it could be Baltimore, it could be New York. I'll just have to take it one pedal at a time. With a newfound fire in my belly and a hunger to take on all that life has to offer, I hit the road heading east, eager to discover some of America's tastiest delicacies. That's when it dawned on me just how abundant fast food chains really are. You know, when we started out this bike ride, I was planning to uncover a food trail. But um, as the days went on, I was surprised to find out that every town that we ride into, what we saw was fast food joints everywhere. It's just McDonald's, Burger King, KFC, Pizza Hut. Fast food after fast food. And there were little healthy options for salads or just good nutritious food, which is why I'm was really looking forward to getting to Newton, Kansas and going to the Newton bike shop because James promised that he was going to prepare for us ribs. A former TV producer, James abandoned a life of camera, lights and action to serve the cycling community at large. So what is your vision for a Newton bike shop? Most uh, common bike shops will not work on department store bikes. I find that really silly, considering that 73% of our population in America rides a department store bike. Why would you not work on them? So if I have an affordable shop that fits the guy on the department store bike right up to the girl racing on this bike, um, I get more bicycles going. And with more bicycles going, more stuff happens for bicycles. I don't want people to look at what I've done and not copy it. Anybody can do this. So I'm making things as simple as the bike wash. It really is just a $150 horse trough with a $4 shower curtain and a water hose. The other thing is, is uh, I want to be part of bringing back small towns. And I'm like many people on this planet. I'm not the only one that knows this. Uh, people on bicycles actually stop in the small towns and they actually support them. And I happen to believe that people on bicycles will bring small towns back. Yeah. Uh, if you figure out how you travel in a car, as you may have already seen, over a 200 mile period, you get up in the morning, you fill up with gas, around lunchtime you'll eat lunch, and then at the end of the day, at your 200 miles, you'll get accommodations. 
A cyclist takes four days to do that, eats 12 times, and stops at almost every single stop on the way. As you can contest, every convenience store in every town spends a little bit. So if you take that times thousands of cyclists every season, some of these little towns can actually survive. I'm, I'm Derek Wilson, I'm 28, I'm from El Dorado, Kansas, and yeah, I've been riding with Angie for a few weeks now, on and off, and it's been a blast. Angie and I had been riding on and off together for a couple of weeks, and then as we approached uh, Kansas, we when we got into Newton, my family is pretty close to there, so um, I was going through some difficult times, some struggles, and I figured that would be a good place to stop. Um, I was having trouble with funds and lack of motivation, so it just seemed like a wise decision to just just stop there. And as soon as I got in, I was expecting my parents to be like, oh yeah, welcome home, like, don't worry about it. Here's a good place to stop. But they were just the opposite. And of course, Angie really wanted me to keep pushing forward. And yeah, it was just all this encouragement from all these people. And, and so I decided to keep going. because I <laughs> Technically, I felt like I had no other choice. Like, I was just like, I guess I'll just keep, keep going to the coast, so. Yeah, I, I had a giant beard and long hair, and uh, I had I'd been growing it for two years. Well, the the hair, anyways. I trimmed up the beard a few times, but anyways, yeah, I just looked like a burly kind of homeless man for a while. <laughs> yeah, I um, chopped it all off just a day ago because after Newton, uh, and after all the encouragement. All the encouraging words I heard from everybody, I started thinking, yeah, this would be, maybe I should have a new look that kind of matches my feelings of, uh, of um, all the motivation and everything. So to kind of motivate myself, I think just taking all the hair off and everything was kind of a, a nice, fresh start um, to keep going. I really didn't want to stop because, <clears throat> I mean, it, I knew it would be such an accomplishment at the end. And then also, like since my parents were encouraging me in Kansas, just just that feeling of what they'll probably be feeling. I'm really happy that I'm continuing on and, and making it to the East Coast. <laughs> They say, time flies when you're having fun. Well, it sure did. So much so, I can barely remember riding through the remaining five states and savoring some of my favorite food. What started out as a cycling adventure ultimately led me to care much more deeply about the human fight for our dreams, discovered in the people I met along the way. This is day 37, and we are just on the 200 miles to the East Coast, getting there really close. In the next day or two, we should get there. So no matter how difficult this is, we're just going to dig deep and just paddle through. So I hope our legs and our lungs will hold up to get us through. the other side of the country, I'm gonna get myself a slice of pizza, man. <laughs>
made it to Baltimore, the end point of this bike ride. 39 days, 4,000 miles, 13 states. Um, I'm relieved that it's over. It's actually pretty harrowing riding in here, riding through the ghetto areas. So it's nice to be here and by the water. It's, it's hard to put into words what I really feel right now. Before the end of this ride, I was trying to think in my head what I would say or how I'd feel when I come to this point. But now that I'm here, it's... I'm at a loss for words, really. I don't think that I'm anything special or extraordinary for having done this. I feel as normal as I did before I started this. All I had was a dream and I went for it and it was difficult and every other day I wanted to give up. But people would tell me that I'm going to regret it if I don't carry on and that I could do this. So that was all that kept me going. This is what I feel. I, I want people to take home that that you can feel as ordinary as you are, but we can really do something great if we want to. my all. It took 4,000 miles on the road, 420 hours of planning, 312 hours of cycling, 13 states, 5 flat tires, 200 gummy bears, 82 pancakes, 56 apples, 40 Subway cookies, 7 banana nut muffins, 5 bottles of Coca-Cola, and one final destination to reach. But in the end, it wasn't about the destination. It was all about the journey. For the journey taught me, there can be no growth without discomfort. Success doesn't come to those who are talented. It comes to those who work hard and persevere through the storm. Fight for what you love. The reward lasts a lifetime. And most importantly, nothing beats a familiar face and a hot slice of pizza. Ready to 
Yeah.